afternoon. We're coming on the air right now uh, from what a lot of people probably just felt. A earthquake uh, just struck about uh, three miles south southwest of Wasco. We're hearing it's a 4.9 magnitude earthquake. And we have had a lot of calls coming into the newsroom. And uh, yes, we felt it in our newsroom. Certainly, uh, certainly it was a jolt and then a, a wave afterwards. And the, we're still getting some details about if anybody was actually impacted by this or if it caused any damage. But once again, a 4.9 earthquake just about three miles south southwest of Wasco. Yeah, we're going to pull up the map right here uh, so we can see just uh, where we're talking about. This is in the, obviously, Wasco Delano area. As Jackie mentioned, this really came over as, as a, a jolt. A lot of people in our newsroom said it felt like uh, someone upstairs had dropped something very large, uh, and everyone kind of looked around at each other, and then we felt that wave after. And of course, now, if you check Twitter and uh, check uh, the, the phone calls that we're getting inside here uh, to our newsroom, a lot of people saying they felt this how uh, far away um, this 4.9 magnitude earthquake, again, according, uh, this is initial, these uh, magnitudes can change. In, uh, in fact, it's changing right now. Our meteorologist, Jesus Lopez, says it's just been downgraded to a 4.8. Okay. And it happened but still, seven kilometer. Jesus, uh, if we could, Why don't you come on in, Jesus? Okay. This is all pretty fluid right now, yeah. so we're going to just bring him on in and show us what we're talking about. This happened, uh, what, as we said, what, about 15 minutes ago? Yes. Um, Local, the UTC time was 2.23, which is just like 15 minutes ago, mm -hmm. basically at 4 p.m. And um, the magnitude was 4.8. Now it was downgraded. And um, yes, it happened seven kilometers south, southwest of Wasco. Yeah, and obviously this is, uh, there was an earthquake just uh, last week in Northern California. Um, and uh, so this is obviously something that people were aware of that this could happen uh, in our area. It's just when mm -hmm. and if this is going to happen. And obviously, uh, this is jolted Bakersfield in Kern County today. Correct. And this was your first earthquake, correct? Yes, it was my first earthquake. And, and your reaction? Uh, I hid under the desk. That's <laughs> the best way you do. You have to protect your head in that's, cases that's like that. That's Bakersfield true. Blaze right now tweeting out, uh, wow, 4.9 magnitude earthquake. That is not small. A lot of people on Twitter uh, lighting this up right now talking about just uh, the sheer size of this. And as we mentioned, uh, we were in the newsroom just going through the planning for our 5 o'clock show, uh, and it, it was a large jolt, uh, and a lot of people commented that they thought someone I was upstairs. And, and it's worth mentioning right now, if you, are, if you have family members who are working, uh, say, at a department store, at the mall, at a large mm -hmm. commercial building, what happens in a lot of these situations is the fire alarms will be tripped automatically. Okay. In fact, we've been listening to the uh, Kern County Fire and City Fire scanners, and they are quite literally lighting up right now with calls for commercial fire alarms. In fact, we heard scanner traffic uh, that the downtown fire station one uh, was sending out some equipment. This isn't confirmed, but sending there. out equipment as a precaution uh, right out the gate, right out the door. And we have uh, my meteorologist Mike Boyce actually heading to that scene right now. And uh, we will have team coverage of this earthquake and the effects uh, that we will, of course, be talking about tonight at 5. And you probably will also notice that all of the local fire stations, all of the fire engines will be brought out of the uh, station houses right now. It's just as a safety precaution. They do that in the event of an earthquake. And I'm looking up right now on the magnitude scale. It says anything between a 2.5 to a 5.4. It's often felt but only causes minor damage. And they have about 30,000 of those a year. Right. And these aren't uncommon in California, obviously. It's been a long time. I remember, I want to say 2009 or 2010, we had a pretty sizable earthquake here in Bakersfield where, you know, the pool water was splashing, mm -hmm. your chandeliers were moving back and forth. Uh, this one, that one was a more prolonged uh, shaking. This was a very jolt, like someone rammed a car into your house or into your building. Uh, this was certainly uh, pronounced. We just had another replica. It was um, 2.7. Same location. So an aftershock. An aftershock, aftershock. aftershock yes. yes. Uh -huh. right. So okay. it's just. Well, so, so Jesus is going to be in our weather center tracking uh, any aftershocks we have through right. our quake tracker system mm -hmm. and exactly how the USGS is going to pinpoint this and where. Correct. So we'll be looking for you for more of that. Correct. Okay, Thank you. So, but we are not expecting to hear about any real damage from this unless right. it's just a couple of bottles or something tipping over. I remember a similar thing happened out in Taft a few years ago and it felt like a, a truck hit the building. And here we have some construction going on upstairs. Right. Right. And we thought, we thought, we thought they were getting a little more aggressive in right. their construction, and then it, was, it, it continued. So it was right. And, and if, you have, if you have family members at home, uh, obviously give them a call. What happens in a lot of these situations is the phone lines are flooded. Uh, you may have a hard time reaching someone on the cell phone. You may have a hard time getting a text through. Uh, if your Wi-Fi is, is uh, working properly, that's the best way to, to maybe send a, an iMessage to someone or to make a phone call on FaceTime because uh, in these situations, a lot of people are texting their friends right now, calling mm -hmm. those cell phone towers, 
and uh, swamping the system. And incredible thing is that the depth was zero miles. It was just on the surface. It's, it, it's, it was. It was on yes, the surface. Yes, it says right there, zero miles. So it's just. It's oh, so that's probably why we, why we felt it. Felt like, it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Because the deeper it is, right. it's more of a rolling motion. Is correct. That correct. It's more energy. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll speak to our uh, folks in the booth. If we have uh, information, a fire chief or captain, we can get on the phone right now. Just to confirm a lot of this uh, situation, we are efforting that, according to our producers uh, in the booth right now, to try to talk to uh, first responders and see what their response is going to be to this. Obviously, as uh, we mentioned, by doing some research online and the history of these quakes, not a lot of damage occurs right. from them. Uh, but certainly people are going to be rattled and uh, people are going to be <laughs> talking all, well, about it's this. Not, we get a little complacent, really, living here in the right. South Valley because we're not usually the ones that are affected by large earthquakes. And so we take it for granted that it's not going to happen here. And then something like that happens right. and you remember, oh, yeah. And that's not just uh, the last earthquake we had up uh, in Northern California. We all kind of felt it. There was people tweeting about it and talking about mm -hmm. it. It was sort of like, hey, did that happen? Well, this, I don't think there was a mistake. No, it really happened. This happened. We felt it. And, of course, now uh, we're talking about it. And not, if nothing else, it also serves as a good reminder to uh, those earthquake preparedness kits that, right. that we get. And then we let them stay in our garage safely right. in a corner right. someplace. And it's a good thing to update those every couple of years. Make sure you have your, or probably more often than that get all your water and all your goods together because it, you never know. Well, the first a, thing I thought about, I'm not sure if folks at home thought this, was, was, okay, that was an earthquake. What's happening next? What may come after this? And that's kind of the human emotion behind this is mm -hmm. uh, you make it through that, that initial jolt. Is it over? <laughs> is something going to follow this? Uh, and so obviously as we as we talk, yeah, if, if folks need to evacuate the house, right. if they need to, I, my first instinct was to uh, move to a doorway mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. find a, we have right. lights around. And, and it was and relatively brief too, right. which is always a blessing. And, and I think that's what led a lot of people to think initially, did something, did, was did that, a was car it crash into the side <laughs> of the building? Did someone <laughs> drop something upstairs? Uh, and what, worth mentioning, and this is a scenario here in Kern County that we talk about a lot, is the Lake Isabella Dam. Uh, mm -hmm, in that area mm -hmm. is that's the big concern from um, the Army Corps of Engineers here for a long time has been if we do get the big one if it does strike Kern County are we prepared and obviously mm -hmm. they've, they've taken years to prepare that but you got to imagine for folks living up in Lake Isabella and in the mountain communities that's the first thought that goes through their mind oh, is, absolutely. is this the earthquake that's going to break that dam and obviously, and, and fortunately, we're not talking we about We really that. haven't had anything of this magnitude for quite a while here. Mm -hmm. I think it's been, we've had several of these around California, but this really does get our attention when it happens right here. We also want to make sure that everybody stays on our uh, mobile and tablet app for the very latest on this, <coughs> excuse yep. me, and also on our website, because we will be monitoring this, obviously, for the next uh, several hours to make sure this is just an isolated event and hopefully nothing coming a yeah, predictor of things to come. And we've already sent out two push alerts uh, to our free mobile and tablet app, just letting you know uh, about the uh, magnitude earthquake, where it struck, and obviously we're going to be updating that story. Um, you know, as, as a homeowner, and I, I certainly think a lot of people here will think this, you know, your first initial reaction now is to go around and check your house. Mm -hmm. If you have a pool, make sure it's not leaking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, we'll probably be talking about that in the next few days of, of the, the checklist that you want to go through. It, another checklist item is, do you know how to turn the gas off at your exactly, house? Right. Because a lot of people don't. I don't. I can't say I know how. And I where it's myself, located, where the where gas it is, is and how to, how to, you're supposed to have an actual wrench by the gas line. Right. I'm pretty sure we don't have that. And it's a, like you mentioned earlier, this is a good wake-up call mm -hmm. to be prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure we'll be talking about this in the next few days of get that kit ready, uh, get it out of your car if it's still in your trunk, get it inside uh, into a closet, into a safe place where you know. Well, and update uh, everything in it too. A lot of times they come with first aid kits and water and things right. like that, and you have the food and, and the, the perish and yeah, yeah for, for three days worth of food and water, and you want to make sure that's all updated as so, well. So as we mentioned, if you're just joining us, uh, and you probably felt it, a 4.8 now been downgraded. Uh, we'll change this graphic in a moment. Uh, 4.8 magnitude earthquake about three miles south of Wasco. So undoubtedly the folks in Wasco are probably having uh, felt this a little uh, more intense than down here in Bakersfield. Uh, struck just after, uh, I'm not sure on the time, just after four o'clock I believe. We can get an exact mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, like we mentioned, we're going to stay on the air with you. We have uh, crews that are going out around town right now. We have one crew heading to the fire station downtown to get their response time. We have someone going to Cal State uh, to talk to uh, geology, uh, geologist folks out there right. to get their uh, exact pinpoint of, of what happened. And, and we're going to stay on the air with you and bring you that as we get it. Yeah, it would be nice to talk to some people, but we don't have that really lined up right now. So hopefully our, uh, our Twitter and our Facebook page will suffice for now, but we will get some more interviews as the day goes on. Just got a tweet from someone, uh, Kristen Taylor, saying uh, thank you for the coverage. 
uh, and just got a tweet from Meredith saying, uh, we're watching, there was no role for us, just that big jolt. And that's kind of how I felt it. Uh, I didn't feel that after effect because I, you know, you perk up and you, you say, what was that? It always has that, that feeling like you're on a ship. Right. Right after you get that first and then there's a the wave of yeah, trying to, yeah. I went through an earthquake uh, when I was in high school in Seattle and that was a six point, I want to say 6.7 and that was a long one. That was like 30, mm -hmm. 35 seconds. Mm -hmm. You see the ground rolling under you and that was certainly uh, a lot different and terrifying. But no doubt if you were in this uh, and felt this just moments ago, uh, it is certainly is a jolt. It, it's the, the thing we talked about that first, what do you do if the uh, aftershock is coming. If it's going to be larger, do you make your way to a door? Mm -hmm, do you? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Once everybody's cut off line. Right. For me, it's about 15 seconds. Right. <laughs> and then go. <laughs> now, the last one you're mentioning, the last one we had was the, the day that Mayor Hall announced that he wouldn't be running again. Right. And uh, I was interviewing him at the time. And, you and, felt and, it and I felt it. I, and I didn't know if it was something in reaction to the fact that he was announcing that he right. wouldn't be running for mayor again, or if I was just feeling the emotion from that, or no, but it was actual. Did, it did was you guys talk about it? Did you recognize No, I didn't want to interrupt the interview, right. so I thought it was just me. <laughs> right. Nobody else mentioned it. Well, it's it. kind of funny. We were in a news meeting at that same time when you were out doing that interview, and uh, the same reaction. It was after the fact that everyone was like, did we just have an earthquake? Um, and as we mentioned, that was about a week ago. Uh, we there was no mistaking this one. No mistaking this one. Again, a 4.8 now downgraded by the USGS. Uh, strike time there, as you see on your screen, 4.02 p.m. At depth at zero miles, which is uh, I've never heard of that. Rare. Shallow. That's well, very shallow. I think they're just trying to uh, see. Analyze it. Up, yeah, exactly, and mm -hmm. update it. But it's a shallow earthquake, so that's why we felt it so much, and we felt that energy, and also, I mean, the lighting, the lights here in the mm -hmm. studio were shaking. Mm -hmm. there, was a there was a moment that I just hid under my desk just in case one of those lights was going to hit me. Right. But, yes, it's so shallow, that's why we felt that energy. And I bet you, I mean, even my camera at home went off. Just right. the motion sensor. Motion sensor. Mm -hmm. That means mm -hmm. right. yeah. another uh, another reminder on that. If you are not at your home right now, if you are at work watching us on your live stream device, or if you uh, have a family member at home, make sure to maybe call your alarm company. Make sure everything's set with that and, uh, and reset. And, and as we mentioned, if you're working in a commercial building, if you're at Costco, if you have family members that work at a Target, Home Depot, most likely when that earthquake struck, their fire alarms were going off because it's protocol from the fire department. When some like our home alarms are going right. off. So too are public alarms. So, and just you have to think of an earthquake as, say, you um, when you throw a rock in the pond and you makes that mm -hmm, ripple mm -hmm, of wave. Mm -hmm. That's how an earthquake is. It just gives you that wave of energy instead of giving you water. It's just a, a ripple effect of energy, and that's why everything shakes. That's and the more shallow it is, you yeah, say, the, the more, more you're, you're going to feeling exactly. And, and that's worth mentioning. If you were in Wasco uh, and can reach out to us either Twitter, Facebook, uh, send us a video of your reaction to this because obviously those folks there probably have. A slightly mm -hmm. more intense reaction and uh, the way they felt this because the epicenter was so close to them. We're, we're some 40 miles away from them. So, and it was 30 miles. I felt it for like a good five seconds, six seconds. Which actually is pretty short. So right, but I, that's, a, to that's me, your it welcome like, to California. Right, to me, it felt like yes. a minute or so. I was just yeah. like, okay. And you, much much you, you came from Oklahoma right. and, and they've been having uh, several earthquakes right. in that area. Yeah, the last time I felt an earthquake in Oklahoma was um, a magnitude 4.5 and it was short lived. I mean, it happened so frequent that. You, I probably take it, let's say, quote unquote, for granted, just mm -hmm, because it mm -hmm. happens so frequently and you don't feel it as much. But this one, since it was so shallow, it had mm -hmm. more energy and mm -hmm. I felt it. I mean, it was my first, basically, <laughs> earthquake experience. So, so for folks just joining us, obviously, 4.8 magnitude earthquake. Uh, this information we get, Jesus, is through the uh, U.S. Correct. Geological Survey? Correct. Okay, so this is the most updated information we have so far. 4.02 p.m. and that zero mile depth, which... Uh, I think they will, they will update they that. They could update that. Mm -hmm. Explains just that could be any, That could be anywhere, what, between zero and a mile? Is Correct. That, is that the right. idea? Okay. Correct. That's the All idea. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are currently, uh, according to our producer in the booth, we are working to talk to the fire department who, uh, we mentioned, by the way, after this, just minutes, we heard the scanner traffic that they were sending out. Um, it, it, we understand it's procedure in this mm -hmm, situation mm -hmm. where they'll take their equipment out of the fire station, God forbid if we had a big earthquake, and their f equipment was rendered stuck. Un mm -hmm, useless. Mm -hmm. uh, they would need to be out and helping people. So uh, we have a crew down there right now. We're going to effort some live shots. Of course, we mentioned we're going to take this uh, through till 5 o'clock with you and stay on the air and bring you any latest developments we get. Yeah, so be sure. We are on Twitter and Facebook, so send us any comments and what you felt and where you were. And uh, we're also uh, live streaming right now, um, so we're, we're everywhere. So you yes. can reach out to us and we will, uh, we will report what you felt and what you saw. 
and uh, where you are right now. And as we mentioned, obviously, uh, in these situations, I try to make a phone call to my wife and my uh, mother-in-law, who's watching our daughter at home, and both went to voicemail, which tells me that uh, this could have been where the cell phones are jammed, a mm -hmm. lot of people were mm -hmm. making phone calls. So if you weren't able to get uh, through to your loved ones just to make sure they're okay and to talk about this, uh, perhaps try again, or as we mentioned, if you can connect through Wi-Fi, uh, not right. only could you be live streaming this if you're not near a TV, but you could also be getting. I contact. was checking to see if I can have the live camera feed, and the camera feed from Moscow wasn't working. Maybe that was just one of the connections, or maybe mm -hmm. we're trying to get into that connection. But I'm also going to check right now and update the um, do the earthquake Doppler, just because I want to see if there's any ripples. Okay. So I'll just okay. be back and with more information. All, All right. right. Jesus Thanks, Lopez, Jesus. meteorologist for us here, the checking on some updated information. And um, Jackie, obviously we were just talking mm -hmm. a moment ago. The, the conversation in, in this situation, living in Kern County, uh, has become uh, what happens if the big one hits, mm -hmm. and obviously the Lake Isabella Dam uh, were to break. Um, we're now telling, uh, I'm hearing in my ear that we're going to get the fire department in just a moment to talk about uh, what we should do in these situations. But obviously, thankful, a lot of people in Kern County, specifically in the mountains, have to be thankful right now that this was not the big one. Oh, yeah. definitely. Because Most definitely. Uh, that this, we could be talking a, a, about a different situation. Uh, do we have this uh, official on the line, guys? Oh, yeah. Anthony Bart, uh, uh, Gal 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 with Bakersfield okay. Fire. Thank you for joining us. Uh, can you hear us? Yeah, I sure can. Okay, and where are you right now? Uh, I'm in the office at Fire Station 1, 21st and 8th huh? Street. So you obviously yeah, felt this pretty good. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, we felt it. Yes, uh, we were in a meeting in the changed. conference room next next door, and, uh, yeah, we felt the jolt pretty pretty good over here. And, Andrew, uh, obviously, Anthony, excuse me, obviously in this situation, uh, what do you tell people to do? Um, your, your emergency lines are probably being flooded with calls right now. What's your advice to folks at home? Uh, what should they be doing right now? Well, obviously, we always ask everybody that they remain calm, and also, if they're inside, remain inside. Uh, go to a safe area, such as under a uh, piece of heavy furniture, if that's possible, and within your house. Uh, you know, if, if you're outside, move to an open area away from trees, buildings, walls, and power lines, especially if you're outdoors. Have you heard any reports of any amount of damage anywhere? Uh, no, not as of yet. Uh, generally, what will happen after an event such as this is we will not hear uh, for the first 15 minutes to 30 minutes uh, numer numerous calls unless there is a serious injury because of they're checking on their families and usually later on they find that, um, the current damage that uh, occurred during the earthquake and then uh, they'll talk to family members who have possibly been injured and then we may get calls after that point. And Anthony, we're going to keep you on the phone here just so viewers know what they just saw on our, on our screen. They have upgraded this back to a 4.9 and the depth has changed as well. If we can bring that back on the screen. Um, initially what we were talking about, Anthony, is that this earthquake struck at zero miles. Uh, we're now getting updated information that this appears to be at a 13 mile depth, about three miles uh, near Wasco. Uh, and Anthony, if you could talk to us just about the procedures you guys go through. Obviously, you train for these situations. You have specialized equipment uh, that at a moment's notice well uh, responds. Uh, is this one of those situations where you look at this as, as, a, as a great practice tool, as something to look at how you can improve the process? And, and what do you guys do? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we train for this continuously. We have a uh, urban search and rescue vehicle, but we also have an urban search and rescue team in case of major destruction or uh, um, injuries throughout the city. We also have a hazardous materials team that's a type 1 hazardous materials in Bakersfield City that can respond to anything that uh, may occur because we may have broken gas lines such as that, major gas lines. So we, we stay on high alert. We also, as most people know, once there's an earthquake, we pull all of our apparatus to the outside of the station along with all of our hose so that we're still able to respond and be effective within the city. Now, um, we were talking earlier about this also serves as a good reminder for the general public to be earthquake ready. Uh, what do you recommend people have on hand at any given moment living in earthquake country? Well, we always talk about before the quake, during the quake, and after the quake. Well, before the quake, we always encourage everybody to have a, an emergency kit that contains food, water, and certain miscellaneous supplies, such as flashlights, portable battery, operated radio, um, any extra batteries, medicines, especially for those who require it, and a first aid kit, along with a little bit of extra money and clothing. It's also important that they survey their home and uh, for safe areas that, you know, they have sturdy tables which to go under and maybe stand against uh, strong interior walls. And uh, there's a lot of dangerous areas to avoid, and we say stay away from windows, mirrors, hanging objects, fireplaces, and all tall, unsecured furniture. 
And, and Anthony, um, uh, certainly good advice. Can you talk a little bit about, um, we, on the scanners, we heard a lot of uh, traffic about fire alarms going off. Um, some folks here in the newsroom have said that, you know, their personal uh, security alarms have been tripped off. Or how, are you guys hearing a lot of those calls come through, and is, is that something that we would typically expect after this? That's when uh, our dispatch center will definitely get flooded with these types of calls because uh, everybody anticipates because they heard an alarm go off that there's uh, just a major issue with um, any type of uh, emergency, such as uh, they might have a fire, a gas leak, such as anything like that. But generally, it's just your alarm tripping because of the major uh, result of the jolt. Right. So is, is one of the big consequences in something like this people jamming the phone lines because they are so concerned and everybody wants to call and find out what happened when maybe they need to just step back and, and hold off calling? Yeah, and it's best. It's best to just um, analyze the situation, uh, make sure everybody obviously within the home is, is secured okay. And once you understand that everybody in the home is okay and there's no smell of uh, smoke or fire, I mean, it's best just... Uh, to leave the phone lines alone until if you do find something and there's a serious injury, obviously call. Um, but as far as that, clear the phone lines, keep them clear because there's a lot of major emergencies that may go on, and we want we anticipate that. And it may not happen, but we anticipate that uh, we're going to have issues, so we're in the ready. Oh. Also, we're also talking about the gas lines. People, uh, I don't think most people know how to turn off their gas. Is that something everybody should know? Oh, absolutely, yes. And they should have a tool nearby that uh, uh, pliers or wrench that nearby where they can shut their gas off to their home if need be. Uh, there's and how, how would you know? Would you, would you smell it if you needed to turn it off? Is that the telltale yeah. sign? Yes. And in all uh, natural gas supplies, there's a, an element called mercaptan. Mm -hmm. And that mercaptan uh, is in there just to make sure because it's an odorless gas, the one that comes uh, into our homes. So it's important that that mercaptan is in there, and it's always in there. That's what we smell when we have um, any type of gas leak. Even a small one, you'll smell it. And, and should, if someone obviously is, is concerned that this may be an issue, um, obviously call you guys, right? Don't try to do yes, this themselves. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, it's, uh, as in any case of a, a major emergency, call 911, and our dispatchers are on the ready to be able to dispatch us uh, or uh, police law enforcement, wherever we need to go. Anthony, have you guys been in touch with PG&E? Are we hearing about any uh, power outages or anything affected there? I haven't heard it any uh, this soon. Uh, there may have been, but uh, I have not heard from PG&E that word yet. All right. Anthony Galagaza, thank you so much for joining us right now. We, uh, hopefully you'll be available to us later because we'll probably want to check back in. But we have somebody else on the line now who also felt this earthquake. Hello, can you hear us? Yeah, we're uh, just efforting that right now. Uh, they're, we're getting them on the line. Obviously, Anthony just talking about if you do, for whatever reason, uh, have a situation where you want them to check out your gas line, give them a call, but... Uh, know how to turn it off yourself if you have to. Know how to turn it off mm -hmm. if you have to, and know, uh, you know where it's located first, because uh, we were just talking that a lot of folks may not know where it is, may not know how to turn it off, so uh, definitely a good reminder. And as you mentioned, you know, he's in his office downtown. They're, this is something that they train for. This is something mm -hmm. that they're ready for. And fortunately, uh, they haven't had to, to use any of their equipment uh, because we aren't getting reports of damage, only the, the reports of we felt it. And as we mentioned, we're trying to get someone on the line right now uh, who felt it and uh, who mm -hmm. called into our newsroom to let us know. All right. uh, so we have... Who is it again? Cameron Smith. Cameron, are you on the phone? Hey, I'm Jackie. How are you and, and Eric? <laughs> Doing just fine. Thanks for joining us. Where are you right now and what did you feel? Uh, is, are Tim and, ja uh, Tim and uh, Jackie, I am actually in my house as we talk. Um, about 4 o'clock this afternoon, I was just mildly wet. All of a sudden, my room and house just shook, and I went out to uh, check on my uh, my mom who was outside. But yeah, I felt it. it. It felt like I was kind of on a roller coaster or something. And Kevin, you mentioned what part of town do you live in? I live in the southwest end of town, um, Tim. I'm uh, basically by West High School, um, real close to uh, fire station. 11, which if that gives you any point, I'm in the southwest end. Right. And, and you mentioned that big jolt that a lot of us uh, felt as well. It was 
no mistaking what it was uh, just moments after. Take us back to that moment, uh, Cameron, just, and you, you said you care, care for your mom. So what did you do uh, in that moment right after you felt that quake? So I went out and I rushed to try to find out where she was. I didn't know. I was just in the house myself. And then um, to find out she was in the backyard, um, but I didn't know where she was, being I'm the only one right now here, but found her. She's okay. Then I went around my neighborhood checking on neighbors to see we had. I've got two elderly neighbors on the side of us and checked on them, but uh, I didn't see I didn't see any gas leaks. I didn't see any fires, but pretty much um, I felt it. it was like you guys said, you, Tim, and, and you, and Jack, you, I felt it. It felt like a really big choke. Mm -hmm. It shook the, my house pretty bad. Yeah, and obviously in some of these situations, we feel that roll in an earthquake when they're prolonged or they're, you know, 30, 45 seconds long. Mm -hmm. This one was, was just a quick uh, a jolt, quite literally, and, uh, and a lot of people obviously feeling that, that same effect. Cameron, thank you so much for calling in to us today, and, and we're glad that uh, everyone's safe, including yourself. Um, we, we, have, we want to re reiterate what we're talking about in case somehow you missed it. It was a 4.9 earthquake that hit around 4 o'clock this afternoon, about 3 miles south of Wasco. So far, no reports of injuries or damage to any buildings or structures. Residents from all over the county are calling in, saying they felt it, all the way from Pine Mountain Club to Wasco, which is where it was centered. Right. Delano and Shafter and officials are now warning everyone to expect some aftershocks. We've already had one, about a 2.1, I believe, Jesus right. said. Yep. Just had another 1.9. 1.9. .9. So they are going in the right direction. They're getting right. smaller. Smaller, which is, 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 is a good hear. sign. Uh, we are efforting the, the California Highway Patrol, and I just checked the websites, and it seems pretty calm uh, right after this. There was no reports of major accidents or anything, but uh, if we can get them on the line, there are some questions I think we would want to ask them just in the fact that when you're driving, what do you do in this situation? And I, and and I don't know what level it gets to where you actually feel it. On the road, on when, the it road. Can, when it affects your, your driving. Right. Um, so we are, as soon as our producers let us know when we have that, we will get them on the line. And, and as we mentioned, Jesus, just finding uh, that 1.9. Is that near Pixley, Jesus? Um, yes. It was by um, 99. Okay. And I'm trying to get more information on it. Just, okay, yes, we have the, now it went down again to 4.8. And the depth was 14 miles. So it's just, it, they're, they're, they keep on updating it. That was, was, uh, that was, that one was the main one, a 402. Okay. All right. And I'm just giving you the latest information. So I see more aftershocks here. 1.8, a 410. Okay. And I, I'm just keep on, keep on updating them. Okay. Thanks, okay. Jesus. We'll keep no checking back with you. Okay. All right. So now we have the, the CHP uh, Scott Jobbinger. Is that correct? That uh, is correct. On, on the phone. Uh, thank you for joining us. We just uh, spoke to the fire department about uh, what they're doing and the protocols. Uh, what is uh, what is life like at your office right now? Okay. <laughs> well, actually, I'm all the way up in. Uh, Fresno, so uh, everything's pretty calm and okay. normal up in this area. But uh, we definitely did feel the uh, earthquake uh, reported down at Wasco just after uh, 2 o'clock uh, okay. or after uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon, I guess. When did and you feel up there? Um, just minor shaking, uh, kind of the same uh, if we had another earthquake uh, last week over in Lone Pine and uh, mm -hmm. kind of felt a little similar to that one, but uh, no, uh, no major effect, at least in, around this area. And so far, uh, units out in the uh, Bakersfield uh, area and uh, Tulare and Kings County down uh, closer to you guys uh, aren't reporting any problems out there on the roadways. We were, we were curious, at about what magnitude do you think it might affect drivers if they're out and the, they're driving on a freeway and they suddenly feel an earthquake? How, how big does it have to be? Um, it's, I wouldn't know exactly uh, the... Uh, the uh, but this would probably be fairly small for yeah you could you could you could feel it at uh, just kind of depends on what the uh, circumstances are if it's uh, something major that uh, actually uh, causes you to uh, experience some of the rolling in your vehicle um, definitely would be a, an issue that you would uh, have to deal with but uh, kind of like any other driving condition you just want to maintain control of that vehicle and uh, if if it uh, is to where you're feeling unsafe uh, definitely get the vehicle over to the shoulder and uh, get stopped right and obviously you mentioned uh, no big issues around Bakersfield right now uh, in in Kern County I'm looking at the same computer I think you are uh, and fortunately, that uh, no resulting accidents that we can tell of 
And uh, obviously, the advice from you tonight is uh, if for some reason we do get a bigger quake or we have uh, something else to report, uh, pull over to the side of the road if you have to. And, and uh, something that you know, we don't really think a lot about is if we're driving and an earthquake hits, what do you do? Well, um, you want to also, as you're saying, uh, uh, if it's significant enough that you're feeling it while you're driving and uh, you see other uh, visible signs of the shaking uh, trees and, and uh, such, definitely would want to pay closer attention, especially when you're coming up to bridges and over crossings and, and just, uh, you know, uh, evaluate the situation uh, that you're in at that point. If, uh, you, if you think that it's unsafe to continue driving, definitely get over to the shoulder and stop. And then uh, those bridges and over crossings are kind of what you want to focus on. Speaking of the bridges and over crossings and things like that, and I don't know if you can speak to this point or if it'd be a Caltrans issue, after something like this, is this something that officers will keep an eye on bridges looking for cracks or anything like that? Us are out on patrol? Yeah, for sure. Uh, once uh, we have a, an earthquake, uh, it's reported out to the uh, offices, and, and obviously they're getting calls in sometimes from the public. And uh, we, were, but we also rec re rely on the public's information. If uh, they they had witnessed any uh, any uh, falling concrete or any damage to any uh, structures, obviously we would want them to call that in immediately and uh, and report it. But uh, yeah, units are advised that there is an earthquake and that it was felt, and uh, they'll uh, keep an uh, eye on bridges and overcrossings, especially if it gets to be a higher magnitude. All right. Uh Thank you very much uh, from the CHP tonight. Uh, advice on what to do on the roadways. You're looking uh, right now, uh, the video on your screen, we're going to re-loop this. This is actually from our tower cam, our HD tower cam on top of our studios. And this was uh, what was happening during the earthquake, a pretty sizable shaking, as you can see right there. Uh, this is the moment right there. I think that was the jolt that a lot of people felt. And uh, as that roll we talked about just a few seconds after, you can kind of see it uh, level off. Mm -hmm. but. That kind of speaks and sums up uh, what a lot of people probably felt as they're sitting or standing today. Just enough to get your attention. Just enough to <laughs> say, hey. Stop what you're doing. We just had an earthquake. All right, we're going to go live now. Uh, we have uh, live C pictures CSUB? at Cal State Bakersfield, one of our crews there. Uh, again, just to ma make sure you know, uh, 15 minutes from now, we will begin our 5 o'clock broadcast team coverage of this 4.9 uh, magnitude earthquake. And the reason we're at Cal State is obviously their equipment. They have uh, USGS has an outpost there. Uh, right? A, size? a seismograph? Yeah. I, I believe they do. I believe they do. If mm -hmm. someone could confirm that with us, that'd be great. Um, but that's, yes, that's our initial reason. We're going to work uh, to talk to a, a geology uh, professor mm -hmm. there and get the information. As you can see, folks uh, you know, going about their business, so maybe leaving class or coming to. But uh, our crew's there uh, working on the latest information to get exactly uh, what magnitude this quake was. We were also going to be out at CSUB for another unrelated story, so uh, we'll, we'll get uh, two stories for one there. Uh, just to reiterate, a 4.9 earthquake hitting around 4 o'clock this afternoon near Wasco. So far, no reports of injuries or any damage, but people from all over the county are calling in and tweeting in and, and on Facebook saying they felt it all the way from Pine Mountain Club up to Delano and Shafter, and you just heard from the CHP in Fresno. They, they felt, felt it, it up in Fresno as well, uh, and we are being told to expect more aftershocks. But as you see, the last one was about, what was one? 1.7? Yeah. 1.8? 2.5. So these will probably continue Still to, to uh, trickle in as the afternoon and evening goes on. But uh, yeah, the, the biggest one by far was the initial jolt of 4.9, which happened just about a little over a half hour ago. So we'll checking out the Facebook page, uh, some of the folks that are writing in, you know, this is the first time I've ever felt one crazy. Uh, wow, haven't felt that big one, kind of big one, in a while. Back to this roof cam video you're seeing of the moments at uh, 4, just after 4 o'clock, that big jolt right there, you just saw it on your screen, uh, was what a lot of people said. Yeah, someone writes, uh, yes, two good jolts in Taft. Uh, interesting to see uh, different people's perspective from around the county of exactly how it felt to them. Yes, uh, just uh, producers talking to me right now about uh, mirroring why, my why phone. Don't you, uh, why don't you hook that up? Yep. And I believe we have Mike Boyce downtown right now. Our uh, 23 ABC's Mike Boyce is standing by down at Fire Station Number 1 downtown now. Uh, Mike, what are people telling you down there? Thanks, Jackie. Well, Tim was just saying that uh, 
for people's first time. This was my first earthquake as well, so it was pretty startling. But right now, if you look behind me, I'm near the uh, fire station on H Street and 21st. I spoke with some firefighters earlier who told me they actually have to remove the rigs from the building, so they're in the back of the building right now, just to make sure that in case there's another earthquake, that the building doesn't come down on the earth, uh, on the rigs. Also, I spoke with the business here at uh, Today Cleaner. They felt it as well. So definitely uh, some people downtown startled by the earthquake. And, uh, of course, we'll keep you updated if there's any activity here at the fire station. Reporting live in downtown Bakersfield, Mike Boyce, 23 ABC. And, and can Mike hear us, guys? Just to I think clear? he can. It's a little delayed. He can't can hear us. It's on a little delay. Hey, Mike, I would yeah. be curious um, what those folks inside Today Cleaners uh, told you. Actually, one of the uh, one of the women there was very uh, startled as well. Also, um, one of the clients here, uh, I was talking to him as well. He said it wasn't even it wasn't anything. He said he's like you have to wait <laughs> for the big ones. Well, because Mike, you just moved <laughs> so here. So you can believe from New York not too long ago, and uh, so this yeah this was pretty this was exciting for a lot of people who haven't been through earthquakes before. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Jackie. This was my first time, and uh, even even uh, seasoned veterans here at uh, Today Cleaners uh, were startled as well. The girl said uh, her face was red and she was shaking, so she was definitely a little startled, and uh, so was I as well. But um, yeah, so all is quiet. Everything seems to be going on as normal here. Right. Um, no one's really outside their buildings, so everything's uh, everything's going pretty smoothly. And Mike, uh, obviously, at a good position right now. He's at. Fire Station 1 downtown, where we just spoke to Anthony Galagaza just about uh, 15 minutes ago about their response. He's there at the station, as is the equipment, uh, just in case, obviously, something else happens. Uh, worth mentioning, that second quake we talked about, which was a 2.8, mm -hmm. 2.9, mm -hmm. someone in Lamont said they felt that second quake. Um, so if you felt the aftershocks, certainly let us know and let us know what those felt like, because sometimes those can be a little more prolonged. You, you kind of get that sense of mm -hmm. a true quake. Mm -hmm. uh, when that's when that's happening. Uh, Mike was just saying that the uh, fire station equipment, they didn't put it on the front. They have it in the back of the building. So if you were wondering why we just got done saying they would t bring it out, bring it out of the station. They actually have it on the back side to make sure that it's not inside the building. Right. And as uh, one of our web people just handed me uh, the cell phone here, if we can take this, guys, uh, just read some of the comments that are coming in on Facebook um, that uh, that people are, are talking about. Yes, two shakes here in Taft. Uh, that was about 30 minutes ago. Uh, felt it in Oildale, uh, felt like a roller. Um, a lot of people have different interpretations of, is it? Okay. There oh, here it we is. go. There it is on your screen there. Uh, sofa was shaking from Floor Alcalia. Uh, felt it good in Rosedale. Uh, that was from Gina Moore. Haley Johnson, I thought an airplane was landing on our house. Heart is still racing. And that, you know, that's <laughs> interesting. Uh, the initial reaction I had was either someone bumped the building, um, someone dropped something large on top of the building. So that's kind of your first instinct is what just shook uh, my house or my business or my office. Um, we thought it was the people on the second floor working on the second floor, which happens quite a bit. We have a lot of heavy construction going on, and it's, uh, it's always a little disconcerting when something heavy right. is dropped, but this was worse than that. So. Right, and obviously some people having fun with this, uh, talking about they felt like they were inebriated. Um, <laughs> Hopefully, uh, that was not the case at the time that this happened. Uh, we want to go now to Red Cross. Uh, they are on the line with us. Cindy Huey. Is it Huey? Huey. Huey, excuse Hugie. me. Huey. Cindy, thanks for joining us. Uh, so, what, what did you feel, and what kind of response are you hearing from people? Um, I live in the Southwest. I, I felt the jolt really bad. It was, it was a good one. Uh, we have been in touch with the other volunteers. We're kind of all texting each other, saying we're ready to go if there's any need. We're always ready 24-7 if somebody has a disaster need. Uh, but we're, this is a good reminder to have your to-go kit ready. A lot we, of people don't have them. We were just, we were really just talking about that earlier, and so maybe you're the perfect person to talk about what exactly is supposed to be in that. Well, you should have some water, some non-perishable food, a flashlight if you don't have one, because that's important if all the power is out. Right. Um, a lot of people say a battery-powered uh, radio. I know that's sometimes not possible, but make sure your phone is charged, especially today, because if we have another aftershock, we're gonna, everybody's going to be using the phone, so make sure your phone is charged. You have an extra charger in your to-go kit, some extra batteries, uh, a small first aid kit, any medications that you think that you may need, um, any personal hygiene uh, items. 
I also have copies of personal documents because That's if your home idea. is destroyed, mm -hmm. you're going to mm -hmm. need that insurance policy number, birth certificate. Sometimes I'll tell people, take a picture of it on your phone so it's in your uh, on your phone, so then if you need that information, because sometimes you can't think clearly if right. something happens. And you have to move um, quickly, too. Yes, and a little bit of extra cash uh, if you have that, too. And, of course, in your car, you on the blankets. But um, I always i have had my husband pull the car out of the garage because if we have another shake and the garage collapsed, how are you going to go anywhere if the car's in the garage? But just all those things to think, but get the to-go kit. I have a to-go kit in my trunk of my car, and I also have one in my house that I can grab by the door. It, is it by the door? So you keep it by the door all the time? I keep it by the door all the time. I also, uh, by my bed, uh, we keep shoes because people cut their feet on glass, and also I have extra leashes for my pets because if mm, the pet gets idea. afraid, it's easier to, to put them on a leash. Or you can, if you have a cat, throw it in a pillowcase and hide the pillowcase. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you don't want to scratch you. Oh, scratchy, that well, boy, that to... sounds like a, a feat That's... right there. <laughs> Uh, you can practice that. That'd be a lot <laughs> yeah. of fun. I'm sure your cat would appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, you got to be ready. Uh, My okay. cat is hiding somewhere in the house right now. <laughs> yeah, and that's actually a, a valid point. If your pets, obviously, we talk a lot about whether pets can predict an earthquake, if they know this is coming. Obviously, we had one, and so their response is going to probably be uh, hiding in a corner. Um, if your pet's outside, uh, they're probably quite shaken, and, and maybe in a corner mm -hmm, of your mm -hmm. backyard, so you want to check on them. Uh, make sure they're uh, in a safe place. Now, if this had been, say, a large event, like, uh, say, a 6.5 earthquake, what would your automatic response be? What would you do to be in place and be ready to go? Oh, I would be absolutely texting the other Red Cross volunteers, heading to the Red Cross office, and uh, being ready to, to respond if someone needs us. And what would you do then? What, what happens then after something like that? Do people... Well, we, we work with the county to find out where the needs are. We do have our Red Cross vehicles, which are parked outside, so ready to go. And we have an awesome set of volunteers that are well-trained in many different areas to respond to disasters. All right. Well, Cindy Hugie, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, as you, You're welcome. As you say, it is a good reminder for everyone just to uh, practice, if nothing else, practice harnessing your cat. <laughs> the pillowcase <laughs> idea. That's not a bad, bad idea. Uh, Cindy talked about uh, just having that flashlight ready. I just checked on uh, PG&E's website. No power outages reported uh, aside from one or two customers. Uh, that's standard usually on, on any given right. day. You'll have a right. customer or two without power. Uh, but uh, the fortunate that uh, transformer didn't blow. That could happen right. in these situations very easily. A whole block would be without power. Uh, so as we can tell right now, and we are efforting, I'm sure, in our newsroom to, uh, to get um, pg and &E on the line, but as we can tell on their map, their outage map, no real issues right now, according to uh, customers who have power. But this sure was felt a long way away. Now we're hearing that people as far away as San Luis Obispo mm -hmm. felt their house shake. When wow. that hit. So that's, that's quite a ways. Obviously, a lot of people from Bakersfield head out that way. So we, we may have folks in Bakersfield on a little vacation that felt that one. Um, just talking about the history of this, obviously, we talk about the big one. Uh, Bakersfield's earthquake in 1952 right. was something uh, that is, I'm sure, on the minds of, of people who uh, lived through that, uh, who had family lived through that, uh, business owners who have places downtown that's uh, in a lot of old buildings. Face. It changed the face of downtown. Absolutely. And you're, you're watching right now these buildings. Uh, and that's, uh, I know I've spoken to so many, uh, Jesus has something here. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, though, you were to mentioning speak to about that. the 1952, it was a 7.3 magnitude, and it happened during the overnight hours. It's something also to keep Even in mind. more terrifying. Right, mm -hmm. and there's safety tips. I mean, they said some safety tips, but the most common one, if you're at work, drop down and take cover under your desk, just what I did. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it was my first one. Right. I know it's not so much of a magnitude, but it's, so, it's just to cover your head. Um, if you're in, in your bed, a lot of the viewers are saying that they were in bed laying down. Well, it's just to just hold onto your bed and put a pillow over your face, just in case any debris falls. It's just, the main concern is just to cover your head. And if you are outdoors or driving or something like that, well, um, stay away from clear spots. Just be around clear areas. Mm -hmm. Stay away from buildings. Stay away from trees, power lines, and drop to the ground. You know, and another point about in, in, your, in your bedroom where you rest, right. try to make sure nothing heavy, like a mirror mm -hmm. or anything like that, is directly overhead. Bookcase, something. Bookcase, any of it. TVs are another scary thing. That can, well, they're lighter now, but anything right. can fall over. Right, exactly. Don't put just big old frames behind your right, bed or right, something. Right. That's just not. We have uh, Miguel Cervantes in McFarland. Uh, is that correct, sir? Oh, I'm sorry, Wasco. We have him on the line. Miguel, can you hear me? Yes. 
Yeah, so you are in Wasco, uh, where this earthquake uh, was epicentered near. What, what did you feel? Uh, it was insane. It, it was like a... I was, I, I was like a, in the epicenter when it happened. You know, I had siblings with me around. They were little kids. They didn't really know what to do exactly. It was kind of frustrating in a way, knowing that they didn't know what to do. So, what, so you were directly in the epicenter, you believe? Were you south of Wasco? Uh, well, not, not exactly in the epicenter. But I was near there. at my house. Yeah, so, near. So what, what did it feel like? Because we got a good jolt here in Bakersfield. We can only imagine yeah. what it was like up there. Well, it's kind of like... It's like, say you're standing on the table and someone was shaking it furiously under you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And how long did it last about? Well, probably about a... Two, two to five seconds, maybe. It wasn't that long, but it was a really sharp jolt. Really. It was intense. Yeah, and obviously, um, have you heard from any loved ones in there, family members who, who are in Wasco? You, uh, obviously, no damage to your house, is that right? Uh, no, my house had no damage, though. Uh, I had some neighbors tell me that a, a TV fell over, mm. and a, a friend also texted me earlier that his uh, power his power room. His uh, telephone line went down as well. Oh, okay. Uh, you mean the, the service? Yeah, he, he couldn't make any calls or texts or anything. Right. We, we were talking about that earlier, just about how folks flood the lines mm -hmm. and they, they try to get uh, in touch with family members texting and everything. Uh, again, we're talking to Miguel uh, Cervantes, who lives in Wasco, which is right near uh, the epicenter of this earthquake, about three miles from there. So uh, he, descri he described this as, uh, as more of a a longer form, obviously being so close to where that happened, folks uh, may have a different reaction to how it felt there as, as opposed to Bakersfield or, or uh, around town. So. Well, thanks for joining us, and we're glad everybody's okay. I just got a, a tweet from uh, Joe, who, who's an avid watcher of 23. He says, my mom, we were talking about earlier about driving. Uh, he said, my mom felt it while she was driving. She thought my little cousin kicked her seat from the back. And so obviously we <laughs> told her to knock it off. Told her to stop. Yeah, turn <laughs> back there. Don't, don't make me turn this car around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, we talked to CHP earlier just about what to do if this was a larger earthquake and you couldn't uh, gain control of your car, pull over, or if you see other cars that are swerving, obviously uh, take a precaution there. So. All right. So uh, we're going to continue just on through. We were, our 5 o'clock newscast would normally start right about now, but we're just going to keep with you and uh, let you know the very latest from all around the area. And as we talk to people, we'll bring them to you. Yeah, and I